We will discuss now several processes that broaden lines, starting with the case where there are no interactions between a molecule or an atom with the surroundings. In this case, the line width of a transition is called natural line width. Even without interactions, spectral lines are not infinitely sharp. This is due to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which says that a state's energy and its lifetime cannot be determined with infinite precision. The product of the energy uncertainty delta E and lifetime tau is larger or equal than h bar, which is Planck's constant divided by 2p. Only when the lifetime is infinite, the energy of a state can be determined exactly. A state with a finite lifetime tau, however, has an energy that is uncertain by delta E according to the uncertainty principle. Now I want you to think about the following question. What determines the natural line width? The energy uncertainty of the ground state or that of the excited state? Stop the video and have a go at this question. The answer is that the lifetime is determined by the energy uncertainty of the excited state. Why? The ground state has an infinite lifetime in the absence of interactions since it cannot undergo a spontaneous transition to a higher energy level. Therefore it has no energy uncertainty. In the presence of electromagnetic radiation leading to induced absorption, its lifetime is finite. However, it is still longer than that of an excited state. This is because the excited state has two mechanisms to relax via induced emission with the same probability as induced absorption but additionally via spontaneous emission. It follows that no excited state has a precisely defined energy and therefore that spectral lines have a finite width. This natural line width is determined by the energy uncertainty of the excited state. This is called lifetime broadening. Short-lived states give rise to broad spectral lines, while long-lived states give narrower spectral lines. Now I have some more questions for you. Why do high-energy transitions that strongly absorb electromagnetic radiation lead to broad bands in the spectrum? And what type of broadening is lifetime broadening? Is it homogeneous or inhomogeneous? Stop the video and think about this. To answer the first question, we consider the excited state that determines the line width. Its lifetime is determined by the diverse relaxation processes and we consider now only spontaneous emission as a relaxation path. We know that the probability for spontaneous emission is proportional to the probability of absorption and to nu to the power of 3, where nu is the frequency of the emitted photon which is proportional to the energy gap between higher and lower state. High probability means short lifetime. Therefore, strongly absorbing transitions with a large energy gap give broad bands, those with small energy gap and weak absorption give narrow bands. Natural line broadening is an example for homogeneous line broadening because the probability for relaxation is the same for all molecules. Thus all molecules are affected in the same way by the lifetime broadening mechanism. The line width is therefore described by a Lorentzian line shape. Lifetime broadening is usually very small compared to other causes of broadening. Pressure broadening Pressure broadening is a form of lifetime broadening. When particles collide there is an exchange of energy which decreases the lifetime of an excited state. The denser the particles are packed, the more likely are collisions and the broader will be the line of a transition. Have a thought now about whether pressure broadening is homogeneous or inhomogeneous. Please stop the video to have time to think. 
pressure broadening is usually homogeneous because it affects all molecules in the same way and produces a Lorentzian line shape in most cases. Doppler broadening is another broadening mechanism. It is due to the different velocities of different particles. The frequency of electromagnetic radiation that a molecule feels depends on it, its velocity because of the Doppler effect. The same effect makes the sound of an approaching ambulance have an apparently higher frequency and that of a disappearing ambulance an apparently lower frequency. Let our particles at rest have a transition with an energy gap of delta E equals h nu zero. This transition will be observed when the frequency of electromagnetic radiation is nu zero and when the particles are at rest. If a particle moves away from the source of electromagnetic radiation, the frequency felt by the particle is lower than if it is at rest. To excite the transition, the frequency of the emitted radiation has therefore to be higher than nu zero. If the particle moves towards the source, the frequency of radiation has to be lower. Therefore, the frequency nu at which a given transition is observed depends on the speed of the particle and is given by this equation. Where s is the speed of the particle and c the velocity of light. For a gas, the particle speed is distributed according to the Maxwell distribution. Because of this, there is a spread of velocities which broadens the line of a transition. This line broadening is usually far greater than the natural line width. Have a thought now whether Doppler broadening is homogeneous or inhomogeneous. Please stop the video to have time to think. Doppler broadening is inhomogeneous since not all particles behave in the same way. They have different velocities. This results in a Gaussian line shape. Our next broadening mechanism is environmental broadening. It is also called solvent-induced broadening, where solvent is a general term for the environment of a molecule. Individual molecules in an ensemble of molecules will often interact differently with the environment which may affect the energy levels. This gives rise to a spread of transition energies. In other words, different molecules have different transition energies. This is the dominating broadening mechanism for the spectroscopy of biological molecules because they always are in an environment that influences them in various ways. Now the usual question to you. Is environmental line broadening homogeneous or inhomogeneous? Stop the video to have time to think about this. The line broadening is inhomogeneous because different molecules have different transition energies. Each single molecule gives rise to a Lorentzian line shape, but because of the spread of transition energies, the central frequencies differ for different molecules. If all Lorentz lines of the different molecules are summed up, the resultant line shape is Gaussian. As an example, not a very biological though, the spectra on the left show environmental broadening of the absorption spectrum of benzene. In the gas phase, the UV spectral clearly shows several absorption bands. When benzene is dissolved in perfluorohexane, these bands are still visible but appear to be broadened. Using hexane as solvent, the bands are further broadened and the fine structure of the absorption profile can no longer be distinguished. In this section of the lecture we have discussed transitions between energy levels. We have reviewed some quantum mechanics because this theory is necessary to understand why we observe only distinct transition energies and why there are transitions with high and low probability. 
The transition probability is given by Fermi's golden rule, which is a very important principle in spectroscopy. We moved on then to absorption processes, where we discussed Bohr's frequency rule, the quantity absorbance and the bare lambert law. Bohr's frequency rule relates the transition energy with the energy of the absorbed or emitted photon. The quantity absorbance measures whether the absorption is strong or weak, and the bare lambert law relates absorbance to the concentration of the absorbing molecules and a molecule, molecular property called absorption coefficient. Then we encountered several relaxation mechanisms, non-radiative relaxation, stimulated emission and spontaneous emission. Eventually we looked into mechanisms that determine the bandwidth in absorption or emission spectra. There are two types, homogeneous and inhomogeneous broadening, which give Lorentzian and Gaussian line shapes, respectively. For biological spectroscopists, environmental broadening is the most relevant mechanism. It is inhomogeneous and leads to Gaussian line shapes.